Hi everyone, welcome to FIT and to this exciting event, uh, Southeast Asia, the next engines of growth. So we're really happy to hear all of, happy to have all of you here today so we can discuss um, the emerging markets of Southeast Asia, including Indonesia, Vietnam, Cambodia, and the Philippines, and see what are the opportunities um, up and coming in Southeast Asia for sourcing and apparel, textiles, and other fashion accessories. We're really excited about all of our panelists here today. Uh, my name is Tanjila Islam and I'll be your moderator. I'm the CEO of Tiger Trade. Uh, we're an online sourcing company that connects buyers to manufacturers throughout Southeast Asia. And I'm here to also welcome Dean Stephen Frumkin, who will be making the opening remarks. Um, Dean Stephen Frumkin is the Dean of the J. and Patty Baker School of Business and Technology. Thank you. Well, thank you very much for inviting me and allowing me to say just a few things. It's um, very exciting when we talk about trade and international trade because that's what the world's about today. We're a small world, actually, now that we've opened up all over. I personally just got back from China, so it's been dear, near and dear to my heart travel and trade, and I was in the textile and apparel industry for 30 years. And I think that those of you that are here that know the group that's putting this together, the International Trade and Marketing Department, know that they are a very professional, very interesting, and very aggressive in terms of bringing these types of talks onto our campus, which is very important, <laughs> and driven by the chairperson of that department, Christine Pomerantz. And I really want to personally thank her on behalf of the J. and Patty Baker School of Business for all the work that you do in the department, and particularly in bringing experts like this on campus and inviting all of our students to participate because I think it's a wonderful thing. I really do. I don't know why, I can't give you any money, but I can say <laughs> thank you. I, um, so I hope you have a very interesting event. I hope it is very educational for everyone. I hope there's a very good interchange between the panelists and the audience. And thank you for coming here and enjoying FIT. We have our first speaker, she's actually joining us directly from Indonesia. And her name is uh, Spida Alish. Um, Jabana, and she's the CEO of Femina Group and founder and chair of Jakarta Fashion Week. Um, Femina Group is a leading women and lifestyle publishing house in Indonesia, and um, among many initiatives of her group include the Women's Entrepreneurship Program and Jakarta Fashion Week. Right now in Indonesia, it's about 2.30 or 3 o'clock in the morning, so Spida is joining us from very late night in Indonesia, and we're really excited to hear what she has to say. Hi, thank you. Well, let me give you background about Indonesia. It is probably not known how big it is the size of America. And it's, the difference is we are 60% is water, consisting of 17,000 islands. And um, we are the fourth largest population, 250 million, and consisting of 300 ethnic groups. We are the largest Muslim population, and yet we are not a Muslim country. Um, because religious freedom is in the Constitution, so we are pretty secular. And media freedom is probably the highest in the region. Right now, actually I'm not in Jakarta, I'm in Yogyakarta, where Borobudur Temple resides. Um, coincidentally, I'm also working on, on the conference of WPP stream. And so here I am doing my real stream to New York, and this is Jakarta, a cosmopolitan city with population of 12 million during the night and 20 million during the day. It's busy, bustling, and very, very fast moving. So let me start with the background about the creative industry in Indonesia. L about last year, um, our president initiated uh, something new that is installing the Ministry of Tourism and Creative Economy. Why? Because he realized that um, the, eco the growth that would con be contributed from this sector is actually very substantial and quite large, one of the largest after natural resources revenue. 
and it absorbed labor of 7.75 million from the 180 million in the national workforce. And it's also an active contributor to the international trade. So uh, the government having Minister Mari Pangestu to move and shake the creative industry to the next level. And uh, this is where we get our cooperation, <clears throat> our support from the government. And there is an initiative by the ministry for making a, um, co a lot of cooperation between the intellectuals and the government and the businesses to move the fashion industry. In our study, um, creative industry is um, the largest sub-contribution is fashion. Because sub fashion is, has a long chain in Indonesia, as we are a country with a lot of weavers <clears throat> from eastern of Indonesia, from Sumatra Island, where <clears throat> in the history we are part of the route, and also to all to the most west, where the fabric is very tribal, and, uh, and of course batik, beading, and all many others to the retail level. Of course, it's about economic growth, but more importantly in the study is that it's creating quality life, it's creating happy economy. And yet we are facing our challenges, that is that is the current designers or current labels, it's lacking of innovation, standardization of sizing, brand to a level that can travel all around the world adding economic value to the design from the weaver in Sumatra to travel internationally. And the skills and tactics to make all the fashion relevant now, and of course, government will. All these challenges is um, we discussed uh, with, the, with the Ministry of the Economic Creatives. And that's when we launched our campaign last year in Jakarta Fashion Week as Indonesia Today, the world tomorrow. Our vision is to rise Indonesian fashion to become one of the most influential fashion labels, fashion events in the region. We have a long history in fashion, in textile. We should be moving to the next level. There is a broken economy here where we see a lot of um, small micro entrepreneurs in batik, in weaving, in labels like the, the designers. And we are also one of the largest producers in garment shoes manufacturer for the world. So we want to put all this together and that's the reason we have Jakarta Fashion Week.
this year will be our sixth year. So we are pretty young and we understand that it's not only about pushing the labels onto the catwalk for the next year, but it takes a lot of effort to bring up the level of the labels, the designers. So Jakarta Fashion Week is beyond about local fashion scene. We have capacity building to upgrade, to, to empower the designers to do more, to be more industrious. And with the support of the Ministry of Tourism and Economy Creative, we work with the Center for Fashion Enterprise from UK to create an incubation program, which I will uh, elaborate later. And we are also working with the Instituto Marangoni Milan, Milan from Milan, where they send every year a speaker for the industry for two days, and also uh, providing a scholarship for um, the winner of the fashion entrepreneur as a summer camp on this um, fashion in this uh, business in fashion. And also, we also receive every year a scholarship from Fashion Institute Design Merchandise Los Angeles for the winner of Young Designer Competition for one semester to take course in LA. Um, Jakarta Fashion Week has also becoming the place to filter the most talented ones as we have Young Designer Competition, we have Young Accessory Competition, we have Fashion Entrepreneur Awards, and also incubation of the fashion entrepreneurs or young labels. We also work with a major department store from uh, some department stores in Jakarta to ESET Town in Singapore and we also partner with FMCGs, such as L'Oreal, Body Shop, Unilever, and many others. We create a media network, um, despite that our self is a media group, but to move the fashion industry is not about focusing our, on our media group, but it's really to work with every, um, every media company that we can have our partnership with. Also, we partner with uh, Getty Image to push our program to the world. Fashion is culture. We work a lot um, with the cultural centers, with Guta, CCF, the, Fr the French British Council, and Thai Export Development. And our program, other than being supported by the Ministry of Tourism and Economic Creative, we are also supported by the Ministry of Trade, where, whereby they provided us a um, budget to bring in buyers to Indonesia, and also cooperation with the Thai export development. The program is all year long, where from January we selected the talented designers. In March, um, Two of the lecturer come, came down to Jakarta, that is Toby Meadow, who is a marketing um, fashion guru, and Sanjeev, a creative director. In the past, he, was, uh, he worked for Hackett. He is still consultant as a creative director for many um, fashion retailing. And then um, we oversee the designers um, through Skype. And in May, uh, they come back again, and this time in the full force, Toby Sanjeev, Wendy Malam herself, the dean, and Angela Quintrell is a veteran buyer who was um, the buyer for, um, for sometimes she, I think she worked for Liberty, and also she, once she worked also for Heaven Nichols. She, she was the first buyer of Alexander McQueen and Dries Van Oten. So you can see her eyes, her eyes for talent and her input. She is really passionate to bring up our um, young designers, our young labels, to be able to pitch to the buyers. June to October was like Skype monitoring. And then in November, we have our fashion week. Market entry program, that was the first one um, that was held in March, and we have now twice already, as we are now onto our second cycle of uh, Fashion Forward, is teaching um, the young labels about export strategies, production planning, marketing PR strategies, and 
branding and managing costing, pricing, etc. With this, um, after two years of very intensive um, workshop about all these strategies, the designers were, requi were required to uh, pitch of their, of their vision. And that's how it ended for the first cycle of the training. And then the second cycle um, during the month of May is each of the label has to actualize not about the collection, but in the booth is about their concept, the feeling of the concept, the emotion of the concept. And um, they come and they talk to them, mentor them really in person. These are the four designers of the eight that I picked to give some pictures of Diane Pelangi. She is a Muslim fashion designer. Um, herself, of course, is what we now call the hijabber. And she has a huge hijabber community. Um, as you can see, she's very, her design is very young, playful, very influential among the young Muslim in Indonesia. And now she's also becoming um, global designers, mainly I, I see her a lot uh, visiting Dubai and the Middle Eastern area to do trade there. And Jeffrey Tan, very contemporary. We feel that her, his market is uh, for Asia, so uh, China market, Singapore market, these are, this is the type of the design that would work. This is our best or success story um, from Jakarta Fashion Week 2013. They are a label that we picked from a indie market and very young, very alive, very fresh. And when Harvey Nichols' uh, director came uh, in the buyer's room, she immediately picked this. And now, from a label that goes just from the fair um, one quarter to another quarter of the indie market, their collection can be found in Harvey Nichols online. And I heard that Harvey Nichols already placed for their autumn winter collection too. So this is an example of how incubation program can really, with all the right push, can push the label to the next level. Another one, this is Yosef Adzvi Um Other than, after Jakarta Fashion Week, we promoted his label also to the Bangkok Fashion Week. And um, I heard that he got good response and good order from the online market in Asia. With the help of uh, the trade ministry, we, bring, we brought in uh, buyers from all around the world, unfortunately not the United States. Um, hopefully some of you who are there will come to Jakarta in October. So we have department store from Japan, Singapore, Thailand, London, and Seoul uh, coming to Jakarta. We have indie store from Melbourne. We have online store in Asia that comes to us. And, uh, oh, America, yes, America was represented by the Lambert Associates, whose uh, buying director came by. And I would say, yes, this number is small when you look at it, so what? But really, the first time that we did, and to have this, I think this is quite an achievement quite, um, for the designers. In conclusion, is really about um, moving the fashion industry. Um, where do we go when we just uh, start up um, Fashion Week? Um, it's really to make all these parts to work together. And then this is a three years plan that we have with the minister. Um, 2012, as you saw the journey, currently we are on our second year journey and to the third year. And so what we plan is eight designers on the first year 
add 12 more designers, add 20 more designers. So in the end, hopefully that we can bring 40 designers, 40 labels into the world. Thank you.